Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Seven Show. This is the little thing I do when I'm not doing the other little thing I do with the pinball machines. This is the old Rama part of pit. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, what am I doing today? I have my Cali IN fives. Um, I, I bought them almost a year ago. It's a short a few months probably, but I wanted to do a, I've been wanting to do a follow-up review of these, of how I feel about them after I've had a chance to really sit behind them and use them. That's taken a little while because I ended up having to move this room. If you've watched my videos, you've known kind of the problems I've had in this space. I had to move everything all around. I had to hook up all of this garbage. Uh, I got some new stuff over there that I had to hook up. And so it was, it was, it was more, um, working on the infrastructure of the place and actually using it. <laughs> but about a month, a month ago, uh, I actually started to write some new music. Uh, I've got this place configured and working pretty much how I want it. Uh, so great. I thought what would be fun for a review, a follow-up review on these is use them in, in the setting. Don't just listen to music, but actually do some mixes on them. See how those mixes translate to the outside world, stuff like that. So the last song that I wrote, I used the Callies only, and I use them for tracking. I use them for uh, mixing. I use those for mix down. I use them for everything. And I took the, the final mix and listened to it on something in the house. I'm like, it sounds kind of flat. Like it doesn't have that mid range sort of, it's like it's lacking in the mid range or something. There's something wrong with the mix. It just sounded a little dead. But then I knew I had a problem when I took it and I listened to it in my car and it sounded fantastic. And uh, I just have the stock speakers and amp and everything in my car. There's nothing fancy involved in it. And everything sounds like garbage. So if, if a mix sounds really good in my car, you know that there's some sort of problem and you need to reassess what you're doing. <laughs> so I came back here and I shot the room and uh, the... The shots from the Callies had big dips in various places. Like it wasn't, it wasn't very flat. It's like, how, didn't I set the dip switches and do all the other stuff on these things? And then I remembered, uh, you know, actually I hadn't. I did for the atoms. So the atoms go from the source, they go to an EQ. I've got that sort of massaged in and then go to the speakers and the, the backs have three, uh, variable resistors on them for the high mids and lows. And so those are kind of tweaked a little bit and the, the sound coming from the atoms are more or less flat, but I totally dropped the ball on these. And I, I couldn't remember why, but then I thought it's possible that after I did the review of this, I sent Callie, I've sent Callie many emails asking what do these dip switches actually do? What frequencies are you manipulating on these various settings? And I was kind of waiting for a reply back before I dove into sort of tuning and adjusting these. And then I just sort of forgot about it and they sound okay-ish in here. They sound fine. So I just sort of assumed that I was ready to go and I wasn't. <laughs> so at that point I decided I'm kind of getting off topic, but I tend to do that in these videos if you watch them. But I decided I don't like my EQ, like from the source to the rack mount EQ and then out to the monitor. I don't like that because in my previous space, I had actually had bumped the EQ settings a few times and I've, I sort of have a marked on the seat because that's all that EQ does. I sort of have a mark, but um, I had bumped them and then I did a mix and then I listened to the mix somewhere else. I'm like, what's going on here? Why is this wrong? And then I go back and look and the EQ is kind of all wonky and not set how I had it. So in this studio, I'm going to use the mini DSP. It's a, it's a little box it's a processor in there. You can actually create a file from room EQ wizard with EQ corrections. You load them into the mini DSP. It remembers them and you don't have to waste rack mount space. They're just little tiny boxes. So I'll probably just you know, Velcro them to the back of the monitors or something. I don't know. Um, but they're, they're, pretty cool little devices. And I think that that's how I'm going to solve my EQ curve and corrections problem in here. 
it's not bad. Um, it's not super extreme in some frequencies, especially on these. It's just in the wrong areas that make these things not work as they are right now. I do plan on making that video. Uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to, once I get mini DSP in and involved, I might do a video on that. Uh, I'll shoot the room, get these tuned up, get the room tuned up again. And then, uh, uh, remix. I don't have to retrack anything on that, but I'll remix everything till I get it to sound how I want it. And then we'll go out and we'll kind of pick up from there. <laughs> so in this video, I'm going to try and figure out what those, uh, dip switch settings do. So I've got the Cali set up. I got my reference mic. These are just some treatments that I pulled off the wall over there that I'm kind of using as little, uh, gobos to sort of contain the sound. So I don't get too many reflections. This isn't going to be super accurate, but it should be accurate enough to get an idea of what they're doing with those settings. Are they boosting the bass? Are they lowering the bass? Are they doing anything with the highs, anything like that? Uh, so in all, there are basically 14 settings that you can do on the back of this. I wish we just had variable resistors like the atoms, cause that's super straightforward and easy. But, um, so position there's, there's the, the monitor position settings, and then there's high and low frequency adjustments. The high and low frequencies are basically just no adjustment or we're boosting them by plus two or we're dropping them by negative two decibels, but it doesn't tell us where that is. Like at what point are you boosting? Are you, are you dropping the, the low end from 50 Hertz or hundred Hertz or 150 Hertz? It doesn't tell us. So, uh, we'll be able, we'll probably be easily easy, easy, easy for me to say, <laughs> we'll probably easily be able to figure out what they're doing for that. The other ones for where your monitors are placed, whether they're on a desk or they're uh, above a console or something, uh, those, they have the, the first setting, uh, is what they call optimal, which is basically a speaker away from walls and everything. I'm going to assume that that's off. So I'm going to use that as my baseline. So when I do my frequency settings, it'll be set to that one and we'll adjust the frequencies. And then for all the other ones, I'll turn all the frequency adjustments off and we'll shoot the, I guess there'd be seven more of those and we'll shoot those and then we'll come back and we'll look at the graphs and kind of see if we can get an idea of what they're doing. Right. I've done uh, 14 measurements on the speakers, various dip switch settings. So let's have a look at the graphs and see what we can figure out. So this first graph is the, all the dip switch settings were basically off. Um, this is what they call uh, free position one free space with no uh, high or low frequency adjustments. Uh, let's look at the low frequencies and the high frequency roll off. So I was mistaken when I was talking about this earlier is that they didn't tell us what it is, uh, what the low frequency and high frequency trims are. Um, it actually is this is it's uh, low frequency is 700 Hertz and below. And then there's sort of a curve of how it turns that down. And then the high frequency is uh, 700 Hertz and above with the same sort of envelope of uh, how much they're applying to it. So it's just sort of a shelf setting, but let's see what that actually looks like. So the Cali low frequency, let's set this at 700, our little marker at 700 and low frequency negative two. Uh, let's set this so we're actually, so each one of these squares is now going to be one decibel. So that, yeah, that looks about negative two from starting at about you know, 300 Hertz or so is where it really starts to kind of kick in. So that and below you're getting sort of a two decibel drop a little bit here, about a half a decibel here in the 400 to the 350 range, maybe a decibel at 300. Okay. So that's pretty straightforward. And I assume we'll see this same thing when we do a positive two. So two decibels up, it's about the same. Uh, so that's about two decibels. This is about two decibels. Yeah. 
that's pretty straightforward. All right, so let's look at the high frequency. Uh, this is negative two. So that's, yep, that's about negative two. It, it also says starting at 700 hertz, but it looks like it doesn't really start to kick in until about 2000 hertz. And then you have one, about a decibel here. Uh, this is a little over a decibel. And then up here we're getting our two decibels. And I imagine we'll see the exact opposite. Yep, looks pretty close. So that's what the high and low trims do. We could turn them all on so you can see kind of your variations. This is virtually untouched in this area and it sort of fans out from there. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So position two, let's turn all those off. Position two is going to be uh, what they say on stands close to wall. Speaker is a monitor stand and it's within a half a meter of a wall. All right, that's this one. So we're still at each one of these grid lines is a decibel. Um, so it looks like we're dropping. Actually, that looks, oh, wait, I'm on the wrong one. Position two. <laughs> uh, let's move this down a little bit. So close to a wall, for some reason, they're boosting uh, the base from 100 hertz to 200 hertz and then they go and they lower the base between uh, 40 to 70 hertz what a weird thing to do for something close to a wall um, on stands against a wall will be this one so that looks about the same, doesn't it? Yeah, it's about the same down here as close to a wall. And then they've boosted it here between 200 to 300 hertz. They're giving it a little bit of a boost. And then they're dropping it from around 400 hertz. Looks a little, a little bit here too. That's interesting. Position four is on a console bridge vertically. So standing normal on a top of a console bridge. Not a whole lot of change there. A little bit here in 70 to 80. And then a little bit between 150 or so. What is this? 130 up to about 261. They're dropping it. None of these are really touching the high end so far. Uh, it's all pretty much low end manipulation. Um, so on it, let's do the next one is position five on a desk away from walls. That looks pretty similar to this one, doesn't it? So not a lot of difference between uh, position four and position five. Just a little position five has a little bit of drop off here in the 130 to 200 range or so. Okay, let's look at position six. This is on a desk close to a wall. So a little drop on the low end, a little drop in here uh, between, that's sort of the same as the other one, isn't it? Uh, it's more like this one. Yeah, some more similar to that one. So six and four are similar, except for a little bit more of a reduction on the low end. Position seven on a desk against a wall. So big drop here between uh, 
that's two decibel drop between about 340 and 470 hertz. Big chunk taken out there. A little bit of a drop there. A little bit of drop all the way across um, from a thousand down. There's more going on on this one. Big drop here at 57 hertz. That's one, two, three, four decibel drop. And then the console bridge, which I'm calling position eight. This is if you set them up horizontally. Uh, so laying flat. And this is a little bit of a change at 80 hertz between, well, between 70 and 90 hertz. It's a little bit smoother there. And then we have some change between 135 and about 286. So a little bit of drop there. Not drastic, but so that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, it's not doing a whole lot. Let's smooth this out a little bit. Have a better idea of kind of what, what it looks like in the big picture. Uh, low frequency drop. High frequency boost. Sorry, L low frequency drop, low frequency boost. High frequency drop, high frequency boost. Position, let's go through all of these again, just real quick. Just uh, see. Position two on stands close to a wall. Position three on stands close, uh, on stands against a wall. That's your change there. Position four is console bridge vertically. That's this, not much of a change there. Position five on a desk away from a wall. Hardly any change. Uh, position six on a desk close to a wall. And these are yeah, hardly anything. Uh, position seven on a desk against the wall, right there. And then the last one is console bridge laying horizontally. It's a little manipulation there around 200 hertz or so and a little smoothing at, uh, you know, 80 or so. Okay, so that sort of gives us an idea of what the dip switch settings are on the, uh, on the Cali monitors. I, I don't know why they don't just include um, like a little graph to show you what the heck they're doing on the dip switch settings instead of just trying to explain what they're doing. I think it'd, it'd be better, Callie, if you're watching, just tell us. Uh, it'll save us all a little bit of trouble. Um, at the end of the day, though, I'm going to turn all of my dip switch settings off because I'm going to be using the mini DSP to adjust them. And I'll probably do a video on that because um, it'll sort of be a fun process to, well, you know, fun for me. <laughs> and uh, you can see kind of what I'm up to when I do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually test out doing the moving mic technique. Um, I haven't really done that yet. I've only done a, a whole bunch of, st of stationary shots. So we'll do the moving mic technique and we'll, we'll adjust the, the mini DSP with an output from Room EQ Wizard. We'll load it up and we'll see how that works. Um, and I'm going to do, since I've already made a mess of my studio, I'm going to go ahead and do another video that I've been wanting to do right now. Um, and it's, it's, uh, something I've been wanting to test for a while and I started to and uh, it uh, I didn't get uh, any interesting results so I sort of abandoned it but I have a better idea to test it um, so uh, that video will probably come out right after this one so watch I'm not going to tell you what it is you'll have to you'll have to tune in and check it out I guess that's the end of the video I have nothing else to say you can like you can subscribe if you want to or don't want to um, or don't do it or do it or I don't you know it helps the channel if you do it, and uh, but if you don't do it, you're not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> uh, I guess that's it. Okay, thanks for watching.